disarming the knife is a lot different from disarming a stick. So the key obviously is not to get cut. You will get cut, but you have to make sure you don't get cut um, say on the inside of the forearm or inside of the wrist versus the back of the forearm. If you're gonna get cut, make sure you get cut, you know, on this side versus this side. Okay, <clears throat> so the feet with a one. This is your typical parry and grab, okay? So with the knife, or especially with the knife, you want to grab and grab the wrist to, for control. <clears throat> don't just go like this. Don't try, to, don't try to do a technique, you know, and counter and counter, and then try to go to the knife when you don't have control of this, okay? And right from the start, when they attack, you need to control the knife. You can still stun them, but you have to control the knife. For example, if I'm doing a technique here, if I'm blocking here, I'm not going to let go of my left, left hand. I can strike in this position right here, but I still want to maintain control. You don't ever want to do this right here. You don't want to do this technique, counter here, and then go back to the knife, because then that time, I, the fight is over. Okay, so let's start with the basic block. Parry, grab the wrist right here, and watch my feet position. I'm gonna switch feet, and then I'm gonna use leverage to take his balance in this position. See it? So this is covering the knife, this has his wrist, then I'm gonna come on the back side, and then use leverage to pop his thumb here in this technique. One more time. We're gonna parry, grab the wrist, lower him, so that he loses his balance slightly, coming in here, and then from here I can take a better angle in this position. Okay. <clears throat> I want to get through. You can come on the inside. This is a classical block. What I try to do is when I block, I try to control, and then I try to either maim or inflict a lot of pain. Okay. So this is a classical block, striking to the bicep, striking to the neck, then twisting in this fashion, then coming to the outside, and then doing a wrist, wrist lock, and then just one more time. This is the block, the stun, coming around, creating the pressure on his wrist, the takedown, and even from this position, you should cover the knife, break the elbow here, and come down back to the knife, and create pressure on the thumb when you snap it across. Okay. Um, there's techniques using your um, the back of your forearm for leverage. Be careful on a double-sided knife. You're probably going to get cut, but if you have long sleeves, such as a jack, um, you could probably get away with this technique. Same thing. It's a parry. It's a grab. Make sure you control the thumb. Control the thumb, then use the back of your forearm to push the knife out here. One more time. Parry, grab the wrist, control the thumb, and then you're going to strip here using the back of your forearm. You're going to push out and pull up. That's the two opposite forces in this position. You can do the same thing on the inside. This is the parry, this is the check, and again it's from the inside. It's pushing this way, okay? I don't really suggest this technique. Uh, one, it's, it's risky, and you don't always have a long jacket on. So, um, with the knife, it's basically about um, parrying the strike, then controlling the weapon. When I control the weapon, I go to the wrist, and then I go to the elbow, okay? Um, I, I really rarely go to the shoulder on a knife technique because um, it just takes too long. And by the time I'm wrapping, I'm trying to wrap his shoulder in this fashion, um, he's got a, a greater chance of just coming through and, and countering with the knife. Okay? Because on a knife, his strength is inside. So when I immediately come inside, I'm coming into his power and he's got, soon the advantage becomes with him. So I usually want to stay outside, control the wrist, and if I can get the wrist and the elbow, then that's great. Okay. So this would be a wrist and elbow technique. This would be the parry, 
the control grab here. See it? If I come in this position, I can lock, and this is the check, lock, the wrist, and then the elbow break. Right here. One more time. Parry, lock, here, and then I can break the elbow in this fashion. Okay? I can come this way, strike. Even from this technique, I can grab here and go straight to the um, suck suck in this position. Okay. So this is utilizing the principle of just parrying, grabbing, control the thumb, control the weapon, and go straight to the disarm. Here and the counter. One more time. This is parry, check, grab, control the knife, and counter in this position. Okay, sure. And what I'll do is I'll disarm the knife um, at six different angles. Okay. This is one, which we did, coming here, either coming straight or pairing and coming around in this fashion. Two, <clears throat> this is the block, grab the knife, grab the wrist, and this, this is simply a fish pop from here. And then the disarm and the cut. Okay, two. You can block, grab the knife, push up, disarm, grab the wrist and hold it, and then slice the wrist. Three. The carry, the check and the grab, the turn, lower his lower the weapon to lose his balance, and then disarm the knife. Three again. Parry, control, and disarm. Four. You need to come here. This is going to attack the wrist and the elbow, so I immediately grab his elbow. Then I'm going to turn my body to the left to get a better angle in this position. And then I would disarm. And strike. One more time. But it's really good that they have a jacket because now you can grab here. Control the wrist, you can shoot the elbow break, and then coming with the knife. Five, parry, this is the ice pick right here. So with an ice pick, it's a little harder to disarm versus a straight grip. So what you, do, what you need is just a lot more torque on his wrist, okay? So go with the ice pick. This is the parry, same parry, coming down to this position. Now what I would do here is I would control with the left hand, see it? And then I would disarm this way. Let me show you why. If I parry, grab, and try to disarm from here in this position, there's not enough leverage. You see that? Because now I'm not torquing against his thumb, I'm torquing against four fingers. Very hard to disarm, especially if the opponent's larger, bigger, stronger. So we parry, grab, see it in this position, he's palm up, which means I'm, that's good for me. I'll take my left hand in this position, see it, for better control, turn his wrist, and now I would push out in this fashion. And I still have the elbow break. Okay. Six, six, seven, nine. Six. Oh, six, yeah. Six is a very common, it's just the, the block, and it's block, grab at the same time, because we don't want to, we want to control the weapon. And then from here, you can either come under, and coming straight up. You can come down in this fashion, try to disarm with the forearm. <coughs> Some people like, you can come this way, then turn it around, and disarm on the outside. You can parry on the outside, this fashion. And then from here, you would roll him. Okay. And then control his elbow and wrist from here. And then the torque. Now you can see, even from here, you don't want to disarm this way. Because then you're resisting four fingers. If you just simply always look at his thumb, hold tight, and just push out this way. If he doesn't let go, his thumb will break. Okay. 